Hello, it's John Heaton, and today I'm going to review this album from Ringo Starr, Bo Coops of Blues, released September 1970. And believe it or not, this is the last 1970s Beatles solo album for me to review on my channel. So uh, after this I'll have to obviously do all the later ones and a couple from the late 60s which I haven't done yet. But uh, this is, has always been one of my favourite solo albums by any of them and certainly by Ringo. Uh, it wasn't too well received because his first one, Sentimental Journey, everyone had gone out and bought it based on loyalty and some people have, had reacted to that saying it wasn't what they wanted, even though I rate that album, I reviewed that recently on my channel. But this is an improvement, I think, because Ringo's voice is really well suited to country music. Um, it always has had been and has been. He, he sung the lead on Act Naturally, the Buck Owens song on Help, and uh, his own song Don't Pass Me By from the White Album is a country number. So. He'd done it before and then he'd decided to do a whole album of it and the story behind it is uh, he was working on All Things Must Pass, the George Harrison album, and Pete Drake was arriving from Nashville to pay, play pedal steel guitar, so Ringo sent his car to the airport and um, Pete Drake was very impressed that Ringo had so, many country, so much country music in his car as well as rock and roll and stuff. So they got talking and then Ringo said, well, can we do an album? together or do a project together and Pete Drake was uh, in favour of the idea. Ringo wanted to do it in London and then Pete Drake said that would be much quicker if you flew to Nashville we could do it in a matter of days and um, Ringo agreed to this, flew to Nashville and the bulk of this album was recorded on just two days, June the 30th and July the 1st 1970. Um, Nashville, obviously the home of country music and where Bob Dylan had recorded Nashville Skyline just over a year earlier. And actually some of the same musicians are featured on Nashville Skyline and self-portrait by Bob and on this album. Notably um, Charlie Charles Buttrey on harmonica and uh, Charlie Daniels on guitar. I think those are the two I spotted. There's a whole list, there's a whole picture of all the musicians here on the back and with the names here so you can tell who is who. But on the original album it didn't tell you, in fact even on the CD it doesn't tell you who plays on which track, although the CD does tell you at least which, which instrument these guys play. So, um, yeah, one sec. Yeah, I wrote down a lot of these songs were written especially for the album. So, uh, Sorrel's Picard is this gentleman here, and he wrote two of the songs on three of the songs on the album, four without her, Woman of the Night, Fifteen Dollar Draw, and um, Silent Homecoming. And then we have uh, Chuck Howard fourth from the left, as you look at the photo, plays guitar and co-writes I'd be talking all the time, writes Love Don't, La Love Don't Last Long, and the song Waiting. So those are the two songwriters that I spotted on here, and then this guy, second from the right, is Charlie McCoy, the harmonica player, who also played bass on uh, John Wesley Harding. Pete Drake here, sitting next to Ringo. And then the gatefold, brilliant cover by the way. Ringo truly looking as if he does have the blues. A lot of them. <laughs> and then um, the gatefold has the lyrics, which is nice. As I say, a lot of these songs written specially for Ringo. I don't think the first one was. The Bo Coops of Blues was written by a guy called Buzz Rabin. But I couldn't find an original version of that, so maybe he, would, maybe he wrote it specially. Some pictures here. So here is Ringo with uh, Chuck Howard, teaching him how to sing the vocal, it looks like. And then some kind of pictures of Ringo looking suitably 
miserable to, to fit the album title, Vocals of Blues. Although, by all accounts, it was not a miserable session at all. It was a joyous session and very smooth and none of that. In fact, one of the musicians, I think it was Charlie Daniel, said this was a typical Nashville session. Three songs in three hours. What are the chords? Let's get it done. Uh, it was not your typical Beatles leisurely session. This was work, he said, which was quite amusing, I thought. Um, this is my original UK copy, although I don't think it's an original 1970. I think this is probably late 70s with the English looking apple. It never ceases to amaze me how you can have so many variations on an apple, even on a green apple. Um, so that's my UK, that, that's the copy I've had for years. And then this is the song my son picked up in New York last summer. And this is a US original, it's got the apple. You can see the difference is that the apple is featured on the back sleeve here. And this is a solid cardboard sleeve. I mean, it's not in brilliant condition, but it plays, it plays quite nicely. And this is on, as you would expect, a US looking apple. And this label is actually a bit more helpful in terms of who wrote the song, so it doesn't tell you just the surname of who wrote the songs. It says, Love Don't Last Long, it's written by Chuck Howard. So, and Sorrels Picard wrote Woman of the Night, so you can, that's how I was more able to identify them versus the pictures on the, uh, on the back cover. So, to the songs, uh, and then the CD, let's show you the CD quickly, because this has a couple of bonus tracks, it has a, a jam called Nashville Jam, which was jam, which was written by co-credited to all of the musicians, and then um, Coochie Coochie, which is, was the B-side to this single. Now this single got released in the US and in various European countries. I think this is a German pressing, by the look of it, quite rare, not in very good condition, but that B-side is and certainly until the CD came out, it was very rare indeed for Beatles fans. The uh, single didn't do much chart-wise, but uh, it made it onto the, the Best of Ringo compilation. Um, so to the songs, this, song is, this album is extremely strong in terms of songs, and it may be an obvious thing to say, but the songs are pitched in a key where Ringo can handle the vocals quite comfortably. And uh, people have said it, and I'll say it, that he should do another country album. To this day, he should do another country album, because this is a very successful album, and arguably his best solo album. Maybe not as commercial, and uh, didn't have any hit singles as the Ringo album, or Goodnight Vienna, but it, as, a, as an exercise in musicianship, and as an enjoyable, as an enjoyable listen, it's hard to beat this album, although, ironically speaking, it is called Bo Coops of Blues. The last thing it does when you listen to it is give you the blues. So nice one, Ringo. The title track is very well sung. By the way, Ringo plays drums on a few of the tracks, but not all of them, apparently. And he plays drum, uh, sorry, he plays acoustic guitar on a couple as well. And there's a picture of him playing the guitar, although famously in the song early 1970 he said he could only play three chords, so I'm not sure if he was just playing along, maybe, I'm not sure. And then on backing vocals, who, who are wonderful, this group called the Jordanaires, I think these, these four gentlemen here, who had done backing vocals for Elvis Presley, and uh, they contribute a lot to the atmosphere of this album, with their brilliant bass, vocals and apparently I, I heard that they basically <laughs> were singing along with Ringo as he recorded his lead vocal but just far enough away to be off mic so he couldn't pick up just to help Ringo pitch the songs correctly which was nice of them if that's what happened that, that's really thoughtful and uh, it worked and then obviously they did contribute backing vocals, maybe. I'm not sure if they were done live or overdubbed, but very successful all the way through the albums. 
particularly on Bokuta Blues, the, the, the title track. But Love Don't Last Long is a beautiful song written by Chuck Howard with very sad words, um, beautifully emotionally sung by Ringo, really brings out the uh, melancholy and sadness of the, of the story. It's three, three verses about three, three people who um, had unfortunate things happen to them in all three cases, so we should we put it like that. And then Fastest Growing Heartache in the West is uh, written by Larry Kingston and F. Dicas. Um, not sure if they're not featured on this album, I don't think, so I'm not sure it, if they're just Nashville songwriters or something, but I don't think that they're on here. Uh, but that's a really nice song. And Without Her is written by Chuck Howard. Yeah, no, Sorrels Picard, who is this guy. And then, uh, by the way, the drummer, apart from Ringo, is DJ Fontana, this guy here. Um, so what else can we say? Without her, really nice song, Woman of the Night. Uh, another really nice song for Ringo to sing in a nice key. And I'd be talking all the time is a Jeanette, uh, duet with Jenny, or Jeannie Kendall, who's not on this photo. It says at the, the bottom, the absent from the photo, G Jeannie Kendall. And Jerry Reed is not on the photo either. So that's a really nice duet. And then side two opens with $15 Draw, which is a fast... Um, number with brilliant acoustic guitar picking written by Sorrels Pickard again. Wine, Women and Loud Happy Songs. I had all three but none lasted long. The women ran off. Uh, <laughs> what is it? I drank all the wine and the song has died away when I ran out of dimes. That was it. I knew it would come to me. That's a great song and beautifully sung by Ringo again. Loser's Lounge is another song similar to $15 Draw. Um, all these songs kind of amusingly, uh, if that's the right word, talk of like people in not, not in the best state of health or uh, mood. You know, they're, they're miserable according to the lyrics, although the, the music, as I said, is uplifting. And then Waiting is a nice ballad. And then the last song is, is worthy is worth mentioning because it's a kind of anti-war song and heartbreaking lyrics and this album came out in the midst of the uh, Vietnam War and stuff and uh, it's about this woman who's waiting at the airport for the, her son to come home from the war and uh, her thoughts keep wandering to his childhood when all his hand grenades were merely toys and war was just a game that he was playing with plastic guns like other little boys and every day when play was over he'd put his little toys away and she'd be standing waiting for him the way she's waiting here today and then unfortunately in the last verse the plane lands and he doesn't come home alive he's it's just his coffin with the flowers so a heartbreaking end to the album very nicely done by Ringo everyone involved on this album has done a stellar job Pete Drake producing um, Scotty Moore engineer Photographs by Marshall Fulwell Jr. John Kosh designed the cover. So a very successful album, maybe not chart-wise, but uh, I'll defend it. It really is worth checking out if you haven't already. It's a great, it's a, I would call it a great album. Yes, indeed. Thank you for watching.